We all have heard it a million times. Gaming headsets suck. But have you ever wondered why that's a common trend online? I think it's a trend that too many people just build on without answering. And what I wanna do here is kinda go a different route, talking about audiophile companies making gaming headsets and are they doing it the right way? So taking a look at four gaming headsets from audiophile companies here, Epos, Audio-Technica, Austrian Audio, Bayer Dynamic. So we have audiophile companies, that name kinda comes out and like, okay, that has to be good because audiophiles say that company's good. So looking at these, let's start with Bayer Dynamic right here. The sound of this headset is awesome. The price is great on it, the build is, and, 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 and when you put it on your head in my review, I stated, I mean, it's it's not comfortable, it really isn't. And, and that's crazy coming from like 70s, 90s or some of their newer ones right there, which I covered before. And Bear Dynamics become a name because Ninja. Let's not lie, you got those 770s or 990s on your head because Ninja. That's what brought Bear Dynamic to life. And I feel like Bear Dynamic right here, I honestly would have expected more from them. So did Bear Dynamic just say, let's make a cheap gaming headset so we can get into that market. I honestly feel, I really do, feel like that's what Bayer Dynamic did here. Increase the price a pinch and it could have done a lot better, but I feel like the audiophile company is trying to just get into the gaming space at that budget price tag, which I appreciate, but you gotta do it right. Come on over here to Audio-Technica. Gosh, I love this headset. When I covered it, I raved about it. I mean, just take a look at this build, guys. Like you got the metal headband. This thing is incredibly lightweight. Perfect ear cushions, pleather, but sports material right there. I mean, this headset, oh gosh, I haven't taken this out of the box in so long and I'm nerding out right here. I love it, I just wanna, oh, I, got, well, I wanna go use them again. Talking about this headset, it's really weird. I'm a big Audio-Technica fan, love Audio-Technica. They got that smiley curve on a lot of this stuff. That curve is just what I love. Coming over to these, Audio-Technica brought them really out to the warmth. I don't wanna say more bass, but it's more or less like the mids, like everything's right here, and then it kind of peaks up rather than getting that kind of smiley curve. Why did Audio-Technica go that route of just putting warmth in there? Bombs and gunshots and grenades? I think that I think that's the wrong approach right there. I, I really do. Stick with what you got, but bring it into the game of space. Let's go over here to Epos, guys. The H6 Pro is what I have here. They got the H3s and stuff, but folks, not the H6 Pros. This headset, when I first reviewed it, you can check out my video. I love all Epos headsets, you know. I always state they're a little bit more expensive than uh, features that you're kind of getting. I mean, let's be honest here. What makes a gaming headset? Well, this microphone. That's what makes a gaming headset. Without it, you have a pair of headphones. The quality of this is premium. The sound, at first I was like, well, it might be a little bit mid-heavy. Sound is personal preference, right guys? We know that, we can talk about it all day long. You may like more bass, I may like more highs. What Epos did right here, I think they pretty much nailed it. And I think they did a lot right right here. They really did. I feel like they took a lot of that that they had with Sennheiser, brought it over here. Now, we're gonna, we're gonna get to Austrian audio, but I wanna pull out something I know a lot of people are gonna come in here and chime in about. How about the PC38X, Epos, Sennheiser, Drop, all sorts of different variations. We have the black ones right here. I've covered this headset multiple times. The sound is good, and I'm gonna leave it right there. We can go on and on and debate about the open back with competitive edge, guys. Like, you just don't. Don't get me fired up. We're not gonna get me fired up about it. You open up the space. You're gonna hear that environment around you. Are you gonna notice that footstep over there? You might hear it, but it's gonna be gone because it's bleeding out of the open back. Me playing Halo, the footsteps, again, you, gotta, you want them locked in right there so you can follow them through. What I say open back's good for it's like, let's talk about Battlefield, right? It's not a real competitive game, but it's a very open environment game, you know what I mean? And you really get that sense of environment, the wind, the, the, the airplanes over and everything, you know? You get that, but talking about like pinpointing footsteps, Again, you don't hold on to those footsteps. You'll hear the footsteps, hear them, bam, and, and they're lost right there. Not even talking about the outside environment of your house or whatever. Epos, Epos over here. The H6 Pro, say even if you go the open back ones, they blow this out of the water. I caught hate in my review. I'll probably catch hate right here. But when you put this in your hand compared to this, there's no comparison. Now talking about Austrian audio, and I just covered these guys in the review. Go check it out if you haven't. Let me just show you this headset here, right? So looking at it here, you see all this is actually metal going in here. You can actually fold them up so you reduce any of those points. Ear pads, nice, big, and plush. Flip down the microphone. The microphone sounds good as well. Detachable cables. And just looking at all that combined right there, number one, the build, the comfort, the aesthetics. It doesn't look goofy, you know? 
I mean, it doesn't look like a gamer headset. I feel like Austrian audio really, really nailed it right here. I hope this is just the beginning for Austrian audio. I hope they bring something with maybe a little bit more bass, kind of give you those options right there, you know, make this like really awesome wireless headset or something. But just looking at that compared to some of these over here, by the way, the price tags, like I think 160 on this, that's packing a punch, it's packing a value and seeing an audiophile company do something like this, that gives me hope. Now we can go even further in this debate, right? When we go into some other ones, Audi-Easy, my ever so favorite Penrose, and how about those VZRs we just looked at. Both of these are upwards 300, if not more right there, you know? They are expensive. And that's where you can kind of come into the place like, well, why don't I just buy a pair of headphones? Again, follow me from before. What makes any of these a gaming headset? The stinking microphone, that is it. Like these two right here, are absolute phenomenal experiences. Like these, yeah, they all got a little bit of different sound. They all sound good. They're doing something different, whether it be bass, mids, or highs or something, you know? These are an experience, I stated in my videos, you have to try them to really uh, catch on to what I'm saying. I can talk about them all day long, but you're like, what, what, what? You're getting a lot packed into these guys. You really are. It's not just a gaming headset. The other way we can look at this, okay? I'm probably mixing you up here, right? I mix myself up a little bit. I want to pull out the new SteelSeries Arctic Nova Pros here, right? We got the wired and the wireless. And this is where you get into that gaming headset. You got a gaming brand, so right out the gate, it's a gaming headset. And looking at this, like I stated with those, what separates those from a pair of headphones to a gaming headset is the microphone. Coming over to something like this, what separates this from a gaming headset to a pair of headphones? Well, a whole lot, and that's why they're expensive. Noise cancellation, right? The features, the DAC packed into it. You got wireless. There's so much packed into these guys. That, that's what truly separates them. And that's, when you get into gaming headsets like this and you look at the price, I state this in all of my videos as well. If you can justify the features and functions, that's what's gonna justify it. Talking about sound of these guys, yeah, the wired ones sound much better than the wireless one. Wired's always gonna sound better. But again, even with the wired or the wireless, you gotta justify the feature still compared to something just like that. So again, what will you justify out of them? What are you looking for out of your headset? And that's what's gonna justify. It's not that these suck. It's again, what is the consumer gonna want? And maybe that's the HyperX Cloud 2s. Absolutely phenomenal headset. It's been great for years. Great build, decent comfort, pretty darn good sound. Passable microphone, right? It's doing all that for under a hundred bucks. Cheaper than any of those we just looked at by a long shot. So, do gaming headsets suck? Why I pull out these is I wanted to show you that, that you can get all of that for under a hundred bucks. Gaming headsets don't suck. It's the type of gaming headset you're looking at. You go on Amazon, you type in gaming headset, it's gonna come up with all these goofy blue, red, and green headsets with all these corny little lights on the outside. And that's what people are gonna think is a gaming headset. And that is the wrong image, because again, just just looking at everything we looked at right here, they're all gaming headsets. So I think the hate for gaming headsets is a little overshot. It's become an online trend. People say, go buy a pair of headphones. You know, you're just gonna buy the most popular ones that are online right there with no reason why. Do your research, figure out what you want, and like I just stated, only you can decide what's the best, whether that be a gaming headset or a pair of headphones.